Hey yo, welcome back. This is video number 15, the final video of the Long Tail Build series. In the last video, we bent some tubes and brazed a custom front rack, and then finished things off with a custom PB badge. In this video, we'll get some paint on this bike and finish it. Let's do this! I had a bit of a struggle trying to decide how to paint this bike. In my mind all along, I had this idea that the build would be uh, easy and money saving, time saving and all that, but as things progressed, the frame and the building of got more and more complicated. I assumed all along I'd simply use spray cans, but as you guys have seen, a lot of work went into this build. It would really stink if after all that work I went and gave the bike a shitty paint job. So I considered uh, my options and luckily I happened upon, upon an Instagram post by Jim over at Wave Cycles. He had a pic of a paint called Spray.Bike made uh, specifically for bikes. After looking into it, I decided that this was the perfect uh, product for the long tail, so I bought some. It is still indeed spray paint, but after having used it, I'd rate it somewhere between regular off-the-shelf hardware store paint and two-part paint done professionally. Right away, the first thing I noticed was that this paint is really easy to use, so long as you keep your hand moving and the paint will, uh, it'll stick and not drip or run or anything like that. I applied a first coat and let that dry for a couple hours before applying a second coat. Most of the bike is green, so that took roughly three cans total. And yellow, uh, I used just a bit over one can. The paint starts to dry really fast, so you'll find that you need to get in much closer than conventional spray paint. I'd say an easy way to measure distance is to use the width of your hand. If you spray too far away, the paint will actually dry before it hits the frame and uh, you'll end up with a dust-like finish that can kind of like rub off with your hand. So make sure you get in there while the paint is coming out of the can wet and hitting the bike. I think the Spray.Bike website does a good job of explaining how to use the paint, so be sure to read all that before using it. Okay, after I got the yellow parts done, I got the bike masked, and now it's ready for the green parts. While I was masking the bike, my neighbor dropped by and asked me not to paint in the backyard. Uh, rental property life. So yeah, we share a yard with four apartments, and uh, but you know, I totally understand they're, they're like growing vegetables back there, so rightly so, he was concerned about like the chemicals. So I was kicked to the curb, literally. The sun was out in full strength that day, so it wasn't uh, ideal. Paint was drying really fast, but I just had to make sure to work as fast as I could. I gotta say, doing the back rack was really difficult, uh, especially getting in all the nooks and crannies, and I even touched the wet paint with like the side of my hand a few times while trying to spray some hard to reach spots. But uh, the cool thing is, the paint 
evens out so well that I was able to apply paint over the spot I touched and it looked like nothing ever happened. Okay guys, that is a... Wait a minute. This... something's not right. These colors look terrible! They don't look good together. <laughs> Alright, let's take a look at the concept. Yeah, so that looks good. And... This does not look good. Alright, let's um... Let's check these colors. On the left, we have an iPhone, and on the right, a Sony running Android. The color being displayed is the website swatch from Hercules. The website displays it as a more muted, less saturated green, but the reality is the green you see on the frame, which has more saturation. Now before I get too far into comparisons, I do want to make it clear that this is not a scientific way to compare colors, but it's a good enough way for the average person like you and me. Uh, my shop is lit only by Photo Studio white bulbs, so that is not muddying up the, uh, the colors you see here. And coming from the person who has seen this in real life, I can say that the video is representing the real life colors pretty well. So, with that out of the way, let's look at the yellow swatches. The website swatches for the sands and color was way off. I'm uh, pointing this stuff out because if you guys are shopping for colors, just know that just know that what you see on the website may not be what you get. Okay, with that said, the plastic topper on the spray cans do in fact represent the actual colors really well. So if you see that the color on the topper isn't what you had in mind, you might want to exchange it for something else. Ooh, -hoo, what do we have here? Uh, the only other snag I ran into was painting raw steel. I made sure to sand all the tubes down, but when I was peeling off the masking tape, so too did the paint go with it. Not everywhere, but just enough in a few spots to cause some raised eyebrows. So I thought, what the hell? Hell with it. I'll repaint this whole bike. And I scraped off all the paint. It took so long. <laughs> anyway, lucky for me or unlucky, the paint came off quite easily. So before I went and messed everything up all over again, I ran some tests. On the left side of this 4130 steel bike tube, I used only spray dot bike paint. On the right side, I hit it with a base primer and then spray dot bike paint. After 12 hours, I tried scratching the paint off with my fingernail and the left side scratched off as expected, but the right side scratched off kind of like, like a putty. It was very not dry. <laughs> as the days passed, the right side dried more and more until finally, on the fifth day, uh, this happened. So the left spray dot bike side uh, scraped off as expected, but the right primer and spray dot bike side held its ground. It did not easily scrape off at all. So yeah, good thing. So I hit the fork and the rest of the bike for that matter with primer first. And this is the result.
change the colors. <laughs> so in summary, I really, really like the ease of application, the quality and finish of spray dot bike paints. But uh, just be careful of the color swatches on the website and use primer first if painting raw 4130 steel. It's probably the closest thing to a professional paint job you'll get out of a rattle can, so if, if that's your plan, by all means knock yourself out. Wish I had done a better job masking this spot here. What an amateur. Alright, I didn't stop there. I needed a way for my son to easily get his cargo secured to the bike, so I made some custom retention using Cordura fabric velcro, elastic webbing, and standard webbing. The front will hold his school bag and is scalable to hold a completely full school bag. I also made a center frame bag with a zipper and that will hold a lock and uh, whatever else you want to throw in there. And finally, the whole purpose of this build, to carry a trombone. Thank goodness my son still plays. <laughs> there it is, ready for school. Okay guys, that is a wrap. Thank you guys so much for following along. I know I haven't been posting much to Instagram, but truth is this bike was done a month ago and I didn't want any spoilers. So now that it's done, I'll be sure to get some nice shots of the bike up on there. So yeah, check it out. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.